This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this lesson, we're going to begin to discuss editing text. If you'd like to follow along, go into your file menu to open, and in the sample files folder, scroll down to 0503 tricks to editing text and just click open. Before we start, why don't we go to our Zoom tool. You can hit your Z key to get there very quickly. And then I'm going to click and drag across the width of my layout. And it's going to fit that width in the window the best it can. So it made everything much bigger so I can see what's going on. Even with making it bigger, I have some questions about this text. Let me go to my type tool. And the first question is, this space between these two paragraphs, is this an extra paragraph return or is it a kind of paragraph formatting called space after? Or is it space before this paragraph? I don't know. Is this indent? Is that a tab? Or is it just a bunch of spaces? Well, to answer these questions, I have to turn on my invisible characters. I could do that by going under the type menu to show hidden characters. And now I can see exactly what's going on. I could have also turned it on in the view options pop-up above my control panel. You can see hidden characters is now checked because I turned it on. And right away I have answers to my questions about how was this typed. And I can see there is an extra paragraph return and another one here. And this particular paragraph does have a bunch of spaces at the beginning, yet this one is a tab. So I know exactly what I'm dealing with with my text before I start formatting it or editing it. Very important to turn on your invisibles. Another thing that is really kind of nice when editing text, if you copy text from any other application and paste it into InDesign, Wherever you paste it into, it's going to pick up the formatting of that particular text. If I were to paste something into this particular text, it's going to be Myriad Pro Bold in this size with a certain letting. It's going to pick up all of the formatting of whatever I paste into. Well, why is this a good thing with editing? A lot of times I'll get my edits in Acrobat using a feature in Acrobat called Acrobat Annotations. My client will actually make notes containing the changes that they want to make. And I can select the corrected text in a note, copy it, and paste it right into the text that I'm changing. So it saves a whole bunch of time. Other times I'll get changes in an email. I can copy out of there and it will work exactly the same way. It will pick up the formatting. Or Microsoft Word. Copy the text and paste it in here. It's going to pick up the formatting. So it's a terrific feature. Well, what if instead of copying and pasting text and picking up the formatting, maybe I just want to pick up the formatting of a particular paragraph, like let's say this paragraph. Well, there's a tool called the eyedropper tool. If you click on that, you're going to switch to your eyedropper tool. Now, most people think the eyedropper has something to do with color, and it does. That's one of the things it does. You can click on a color, pick up the color, and then apply it someplace else. But what a lot of people don't know is it also works on text formatting. If I go over the top of text and just click on it, I actually just picked up that formatting. Let me just go down to the beginning of the next paragraph. And you can see that it's not just an eyedropper. When I'm over text, it's giving me this little tiny eye beam. And if I click and drag, it's actually applying that formatting. If you had created something called a paragraph style or a character style, it's actually applying that particular style. Very cool feature that saves a whole bunch of time. In a previous lesson, I discussed preferences. One of those preferences has to do with drag and drop text editing. I'm going to go back to my selection tool and I'm going to go on a Mac under my InDesign menu to preferences type. On a PC, it's Edit Menu Preferences Type. And you can see in the Drag and Drop Text Editing section, Enable in Layout View is checked. If it's not checked, please check it. 
so we can talk about the feature. If you want to use drag and drop text editing, what you could do is close all of your documents after this lesson, go into preferences and choose that particular setting. Check enable in layout view. In all of your new documents, that will be enabled. Okay, I'm just going to click OK and continue. What is drag and drop text editing? Well, it's actually a feature that you've seen in other applications, like it exists in Microsoft Word. But InDesign's version of drag and drop text editing does a lot more. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to go to my type tool. I'm just going to click and drag across a paragraph. When I go over the top of that selection, watch how the little icon of the type tool changes from an I beam to a pointer with a T. That's the icon of drag and drop text editing. If I now click on this text and drag it to another insert point, it's moving the position of that text. It moves it to that new insertion point. Really kind of nice, because a lot of times when you're editing, the text is correct, it just needs to be in another place. Or if I'm working with tables, maybe the information within a particular cell is in the wrong cell. I can select it, click on it, with my type tool and drag it into another cell. Really kind of cool. What if I wanted to duplicate this text? Can I do that? Absolutely. I can click on the text and then hold down on a Mac my Option key, on a PC my Alt key, and just drag to a new insert point. And you can see it actually duplicated that text to that insertion point. The text exists up over here and it exists over here as well. What about dragging text from one frame to another? Let me just zoom out. I'm going to fit my layout in the window by on a Mac hitting Command-0, on a PC Control-0. I'm just going to click on that text and drag it into another frame. And you can see it actually moved it there, the same way it would between cells in a table. But I can also duplicate by holding down Option or Alt. You're going to find Option and Alt is pretty much universal throughout InDesign. It's going to make a duplicate of whatever it is you're doing. If I clicked on this text, held down Option or Alt, and I dragged to, let's say, this paragraph, the empty paragraph, it's actually going to duplicate it right there. I'm going to undo that. I'm going to hit Command-Z on a Mac, Control-Z on a PC. Because there's another question that comes up all the time when editing text. Let's say your text is too long. I'm going to go to my selection tool and just drag down to the next page and click on that frame on the next page. And you can see in the outport of the frame, that's that little square in the bottom right hand corner of the text frame, there's a red plus mark. That means there's overset text. There's too much text to fit in the frame. But the question is, how much? Well, I could go under my window menu to the info panel and open that up and just select my text. I can just get an insert point by double clicking, then hit Command A on a Mac, Control A on a PC, and the text is overset. But there are no extra paragraphs. It's telling me how many paragraphs there are here, how many lines, how many words, how many characters. So there's something else going on. If the text was actually overset and I was missing text, let me show you what happens. I'm going to go to my selection tool and just drag upward till I lose a line. Now I'm going to reselect my text again. I'm going to get an insert point by double clicking and then hit Command A or Control A. It's actually going to tell me how many words I'm over. Is nine words over? Is 61 characters over? It's not sure how many lines I'm over. But for paragraphs, it's an extra paragraph. Watch what happens if I now go to my selection tool again and drag until all of the text fits in. It's still overset. What is going on? I'm going to zoom in a little bit with my zoom tool. I want to get really close to that last paragraph. Ah, that invisible character. You can see how important invisible characters are. That's a page break. How do I get rid of them? Well, I could select the page break and just delete it, but there's a problem with that. Sometimes when there's page breaks at the end of your text, it means there's multiple 
page breaks. It's very common. Let me just get an insert point, and I'm going to go under my edit menu to a feature called Edit in Story Editor. And Story Editor is actually going to tell me exactly what's going on and allow me to fix it. You can see that there's a page break right here, then another and another and another. It's going down quite a few page breaks. But in Story Editor, I can just select my extra page breaks and just delete them. And you can see that little invisible character, the pound sign, you'll always see that right after the last text in your frame. So now I know I got rid of all of the extra page breaks, and you can see all of the overset text is gone. It was indicating that with a little red line going down the side of that text. So it solved the problem very simply and easily. Let me get my story editor out of the way and just zoom back out by pressing Command-0, Control-0, and you can see there is no red plus at the end. The outport is totally clean, so it worked. We're going to continue discussing text editing and formatting in the next lesson.